For the past two and a half years, I've been captivated by a band from Toronto, Canada. That band is Tupperware Remix Party. Although their lineup and outfits have changed since they started in 2007, their dedication to 80s synth pop electro funk has stayed the same. Currently, there are four members that make up Tupperware Remix Party Dr. Sung on guitar and synthesizers. Commander Meowch on bass, Lord Phobos on guitar, and Hav Hogan on drums. I first heard about the band in an episode of Game Grumps where Danny and Aaron were talking about underappreciated bands. You know who fucking rocks? Who? And they get no love, and I want to give them love. Who? Our boys, uh, Tupperware Remix Party. Oh, yeah. How yeah. hard do fucking Tupperware Remix Party rock? They're awesome. They wear traffic cones and spandex and all sorts of fun shit on their bodies and heads, Yeah. and they rock the fuck out. I was intrigued by Danny and Aaron's admiration of the band, so I took to the internet to learn more. I was hooked the moment I heard them. They were unlike anything I've ever seen or heard before. Their costumes were goofy, they had a great sense of humor, and their music kicked ass. These guys were serious musicians. I immediately downloaded their EP, The Device, and had it on repeat for a whole year. Fast forward to January 23rd, 2015. The day I was leaving for MAGFest, Tupperware Remix Party released a new EP called Two Nights. My jaw I hit the floor. This was an incredible EP with five amazing songs. One of them was a collaboration with Ninja Sex Party called The Hit. I hyped this album up a lot at MAGFest that year and even got to talk with Danny about it when I met him at an autograph signing. When I got home from MAGFest, I began thinking about next year's MAGFest. I wanted to bring some kind of instrument so I could jam out with other attendees in the hallway, but I also wanted to cosplay. That's when it hit me. If I cosplayed as Dr. Sung from Tupperware Remix Party, then I could do both of those things at the same time. It was a brilliant idea and I couldn't wait to get started. After doing some research online, I determined that the best material for me to use was EVA foam. Now this is the same material that is used in those anti-fatigue mats that you see in garages and workshops that look like giant puzzle pieces. I found a whole series of tutorials about EVA foam on a YouTube channel known as the Evil Ted Smith channel. This guy had it all, professional experience, detailed supply lists, and easy to follow instructions. I felt confident that with the Evil Ted Smith's guidance, I could make this costume. I started by creating a 3D model of the helmet in Blender. There was a lot of guesswork involved here as there were no official measurements for Dr. Sung's costume, nor were there any photos that featured objects that I could use for scale, so I had to be creative. I calculated the height and width of the helmet and all its components by measuring pictures in Photoshop and converting those measurements from pixels into inches. The 3D model was then loaded into Peppacore Designer, where I was able to create a papercraft model to use as a pattern. I also used this opportunity to experiment with different sized cones. Once I built one that was the right size, I decided it was time to get started actually putting this thing together. I laid out the pieces and carefully cut them out of the EVA floor mats. In order to bend the pieces into shape, I needed to heat them up with a heat gun. When heated, the foam becomes soft and malleable, but after it cools down, it holds its shape with surprising rigidity. The foam was then glued together using contact cement. Unlike most other adhesives, you apply contact cement to the surfaces you want to connect, then let them dry separately. After the solvent has evaporated, you put the glued pieces together. Contact cement is serious adhesive, both in terms of its grip and its potent vapor. Once the basic cone structure was built, I began creating the layers. At the same time, I started working on the chest pieces. Using a duct tape dress form that some friends helped me create, I was able to craft the chest, back, and shoulder pieces to my exact measurements. All of these pieces had some kind of rounded edge, so I used a Dremel to sand them down smooth. Some of the pieces also featured designs that I etched into the foam using a wood burner. Once all the pieces were glued together, I began sealing the seams with caulk. I did my best to keep it clean, but it wasn't easy. One detail that I wanted to include was a row of lights that would go between the middle and bottom layers of the helmet. 
I bought a battery powered LED light strip and carefully measured where the light should be by sticking a pin through the outside of the helmet and marking it with a sharpie. I then drilled holes and made them a little bit larger using my Dremel. About three months into this build on January 6th, MAGFest made a huge announcement. They revealed that Tupperware Remix Party was going to be performing alongside Ninja Sex Party at the convention that February. This new development meant that I needed to really get moving if I wanted to finish this costume in time. Luckily, the end was in sight. All that was left for me to do was paint and add the finishing touches. Before each piece could be painted, I covered them with a layer of Mod Podge, then three to four layers of Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip gave the foam a rubber coating which helped the paint stick. After the helmet and body armor was coated with Plasti Dip, I started painting. The body armor was the easiest to paint because it was all black. On the other hand, the helmet took a little longer because I needed to carefully mask some parts of it before I could paint it orange. It took about a week to finish painting all of the pieces to the costume. Removing the painter's tape was an exciting moment for me because I was finally able to see the results of my hard work. After inspecting the pieces, I began fitting the armor. I used elastic on the knee pads and band braces and nylon straps with buckles on the chest armor. The final details that I added included the lights, an adjustable helmet insert, and a visor. The visor was made from a flexible piece of polystyrene, the same kind of plastic that's often used in cheap poster frames. I tried to form the visor using a heat gun, but I found that it made the plastic really brittle afterwards. Luckily, the polystyrene is bendable by itself, so I decided to forego the heat forming altogether. The mirrored effect was accomplished by using an adhesive film. While it looks shiny and reflective on one side, it's not much darker than a pair of sunglasses on the other. A few components, like the Lycra Morph suit and the canvas leg bag, were purchased online while I was busy building the costume. As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this cosplay was so that I could combine my love of music with my love of making costumes. Since I was going to be cosplaying as a member of the band, I thought it would be a good idea to actually play some of their music. I started making backing tracks about five months before I started making the costume. In the end, I created over 15 MIDI backing tracks to play along with on guitar. Each track was painstakingly transcribed note for note in Logic. I think they turned out pretty damn good for MIDI tracks. With the costume and backing tracks completed, all that was left for me to do was wait for MAGFest. On February 19th, on the second day of MAGFest, I suited up for my first real cosplaying experience. I brought my guitar, computer, and speaker to the convention center atrium and just started playing. I almost couldn't believe what happened next. People actually stopped and watched. They were taking videos and photos and ah, it was the coolest! So as I'm playing my guitar and dancing around, I notice that there's a group of four guys off to the side who are really getting into what I'm doing. Like they're taking videos and photos and selfies and just being highly animated. So I take my guitar and I start dancing up close to them. I bring the show to them. Then I realize something. I didn't notice it at first because I wasn't wearing my glasses and I was looking through the, the darkened visor, but I was sure of it. Those were the four guys from Tupperware Remix Party. After my song's finished, I walk up to them, I say, hey guys, like, I, I'm a big fan, I really like what you're doing, I love your music, and they say, dude, just keep doing what you're doing, like, you're killing it. And they give me two copies of their CDs, one of uh, Believe in Your Dreams and one of Tonight. And it was just, it was amazing because I, I had no expectation of them to even, like, see my show. I was thinking maybe through the grapevine, through, like, YouTube videos, it would get to them. But I don't know if they were just passing by at the right place at the right time or someone who knows them saw me and texted them, but they were there. They saw me jamming out. They saw me playing my little tribute to them out in the atrium. And man, that was just a killer way to just start off the cosplaying experience. Like it was top. Later that night, Tupperware Remix Party and Ninja Sex Party took to the stage at MAGFest and played to their largest audiences so far. Over 4,500 people watched the two groups play an hour of their hits. After the concert, I changed back into my Dr. Sung costume in hopes that I could grab a picture with the band while they were still in their costume. By the time I got back, they already changed back into their regular street clothes and were mingling with the crowd. But needless to say, they picked me out from a distance and 
you know, they came up to me and we talked for a little bit. I grabbed a picture with them and then something really interesting happened. People started to crowd around and ask me for photos, um, thinking that I was the real Dr. Sung. The guys in the band say something like, you look like you're gonna be busy for a while. And they're like, they, they sneak, they like go back into the crowd and like sneak away. And they're smiling and laughing and it looks like they're really enjoying watching what's unfolding. So uh, I pose for awkwardly for some photos, you know, do the, the hover hand kind of thing. And uh, Dr. Sung comes up to me, still in his street clothes. He comes up to me and says, excuse me, Dr. Sung, I think you left this on stage. And gives me their set list. You know, he signs the set list and gives it to me. And like, that was just really cool between that and like the pictures and everything. Like, it was really cool. And that was a terrific first day of cosplaying. The following day, Tupperware Remix Party announced that they're going to be doing a signing with Ninja Sex Party in the afternoon. So I figured this is my last chance to get the set list signed and maybe get a picture with the band. So I get in costume and I head down and sure enough I get in and I meet the guys again and they're in costume. It's excellent. Like I gave them the set list. They all signed it. You know, I got Dr. Sung, Have Hogan, Commander Meowch, Lord Phobos, and I even got Ninja, Ninja Brian and Danny Sexbang. Uh, Have Hogan wrote a little note for me that said, you made our day. And uh, that's just a big, awesome thing. Like, I can't, I can't express it, you know, with words. I also got a picture with Dr. Sung, which they shared on um, their social media. And it went nuts. Like, Facebook got over 950 likes. Instagram got over 500 likes. Uh, Twitter, definitely over like 200 something. It was, it went big. And I am, I, I can't, I can't get words like it meant a lot to me uh, I put in a lot of work and it, just, it was so nice and thank you guys for being so awesome I had an awesome time at MAGFest and I cannot thank Tupperware Remix Party enough you guys really made my weekend thank you so much I also want to thank uh, the Evil Ted Smith channel because without his tutorials I don't think I would have been able to put this cosplay together I want to thank my friends and family because they helped me through some of the challenges that I faced during this build and I also want to thank my friends at MAGFest because they helped film this and were just awesome people to hang out with. Um, so now that I set the bar really high for myself, I need to start thinking about what I could do for next year. And we'll see what that, that turns out to be. But thanks for watching and I'll see you at a future convention. Peace!